Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the JVC Kedwood Press Conference at IBC 2018. I hope you've enjoyed your um, small lunch to get you through another day at IBC. Um, uh, as you may know, we have a number of, I think, very exciting uh, and important product announcements at this IBC. Uh, I think it's going to be a very significant development uh, for us over the, over the coming months and coming years. Um, and I will, of course, explain all of that in a little bit more detail shortly. Um, firstly, however, I'd like to introduce um, Takao Suji, who's our Chairman and CEO of JVC Kenwood Corporation. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Takao Tsuji, uh, Chairman and the CEO of JVC Kenwood. Uh, approximately 30 months passed since I uh, became uh, CEO. Uh, during that period, JVC Kenwood has been transforming very much and rapidly under the concept of JK 3.0. JK 3.0, that is the third generation of JVC Kenwood. Now I'd like to briefly explain about uh, JK 3.0. Number one, <coughs> we became value customer value creator, customer value creator. By providing our customers with cutting edge solution. Number two, we redefine ourselves <coughs> as technology based company. Technology based company. As you may know, we have 11,000 IP, including 7,000 plus effective patents. And number three is we are open innovation company. Those three are the essence of JK 3.0. Effective first of April this year, not April Fool, seriously, we have new president and COO Mr. Eguchi, unfortunately, he is uh, uh, on the plane, uh, uh, on, the, on the way here, and uh, he will get in uh, this evening. And uh, uh, with this uh, new president, uh, we are uh, stepping further and more aggressively, we are chasing to uh, this uh, transformation, and uh, we call it JK 3.1. As you know, a uh, long time ago, you remember uh, Windows 3.0. <laughs> that gave the, a big shock to the society. And but Windows 3.1 was more successful. So now, JK 3.1 should be more successful. So today, I'm very pleased and excited to make announcement of new connected CAM lineups. And especially, Handy HCC, I may call, uh, Handy Connected CAM is making a debut here in IBC. And this uh, connected CAM <coughs> is not only a platform, but also uh, this is end-to-end uh, uh, -end ecosystem. And uh, uh, I'm not good at explaining all the details, so I will pass the rest to John Kelly. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sujisan. san um, so, yes, so my name is John Kelly, General Manager for EMEA Professional Business. Um, and I'd like to take you through uh, our uh, new product announcements and key features or, that we're showing at IBC this year. Um, 
So, I mean, firstly, I think maybe to say, you know, what do we see, generally speaking, as technology trends uh, at this IBC? Um, well, very much the requirement for cost-effective production, and particularly live production, uh, in many areas for sports, live events, production costs are being uh, driven down, but budgets are reducing, so the ability to create uh, cost-effective, perhaps IP-based live systems is very important moving forward. And that transition to IP, of course, as we not well know, is happening throughout the industry uh, in, in all of its various facets and areas, whether it's for acquisition, content management, and so forth. Um, and also what we see is that growth in non-traditional content creators uh, and, of course, delivery not just to traditional uh, broadcast television, but to OTT uh, and online audiences. Um, and we'd like to think that as we develop our solutions, including Connected Cam, that we're very much addressing those core markets. So our uh, approach then is, as Suji san said, also to um, provide an end-to-end -end production system, IP-based uh, for acquisition, for switching, for content management and delivery. So whether, for example, that's for sports or for news, or for any kind of live event. That's the area as a solution provider that we are focused upon. And within that connected current world, and don't worry so much about the detail for now, and I'll explain a little bit as we go on, then we are fulfilling what we see as some of the key areas for that. So whether it's actual production equipment, cameras, camcorders, and so forth, uh, the connectivity uh, to achieve uh, perhaps a bonded cellular solution, uh, the ability to control and manage that system over the internet, um, and the ability to work with that content within a studio environment. We're really at this IBC bringing all of those uh, uh, aspects of, 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 of production together into one sort of coherent workflow. Um, and a key part of that really is our new connected cam camcorders. So uh, I'm sure you've all seen the uh, uh, the press releases on Connected Cam, of course all the models, uh, particularly the new HC500 and 550 are on the booth, uh, so of course I encourage you to come and have a look. Um, I think uh, what I'd like to firstly convey is what, you know, what are the key technology benefits of Connected Cam. Um, of course as camcorders themselves, they're excellent and high performing uh, imaging, but it's really around that IP feature set and delivery which uh, uh, JVC Kenwood is excelling in and the ability to deliver content over IP. So the new connected cam range um, uh, allows us to do very high bitrate stream, streaming, uh, uh, high resolution up to 1080p now. Um, that streaming is uh, also under very low latency, which of course is uh, important for live application. Um, and also they support both uh, IFB audio return over IP and actually also return video I, uh, over IP. So if you're doing a sort of two-way, for example, news in the field, uh, then you can achieve that seamlessly through a single IP connection. And also we can do uh, what we call auto FTP, which is sort of almost as live FTP file transfer. So effectively <coughs> you start flight FTP file transferring uh, while you're actually recording that, that particular file. Um, and that's, again, maybe for news broadcasters, for example, uh, quite a unique and powerful solution about getting content back to the studio from time. So, as you may know, uh, NEB, earlier this year, uh, we announced the GUI HC900, which is a V4 mount, a three two-thirds inch high resolution uh, CMOS sensor camcorder, so in the form factor of a, a let's say, traditional shoulder mount camcorder, um, but adding in that new uh, connected cam codec engine, which allows us to do all of the IP capability that we mentioned earlier, um, also supporting HDR uh, formats, and through that new uh, encoder or, or codec engine, uh, supporting up to 10 bit 422 uh, recording. And actually, this new connected cam range is the first 10 bit cameras that we've released into the market. Um, so what we have now here new at uh, IBC this year is the new HC500 and 550 cameras. So um, launching here for the very first time, as I mentioned, they are on the booth. And this is also fulfilling uh, a, 
uh, it's a quite growing market in the one inch 4K camcorder sector. So this uh, is a sort of let's say mid-sized handheld camcorder, which obviously you can, you can see here physically, um, is very much a, a growing and important sector of the professional camera market. Um, and again, this is the first time we've addressed this particular market with the new HC500 series connected cam. Uh, so the camera has, uh, I think, an excellent uh, physical design. We spent a lot of time working with broadcasters and other key customers uh, to get the physical and ergonomic design. So as a, as a physical camera in terms of the, the feeling and the weight and the balance and the button arrangement, uh, I think it's excellent in that regard. Uh, it's got a very high quality 20 times uh, lens with full three ring control, good sensitivity, um, and recording onto uh, a choice of either uh, SD memory card or optionally uh, SSD also uh, through the slot we have here at the back of the camera. Um, and that gives you a uh, very high bit rate recording uh, at 10 bit 422 using the Apple ProRes codec. So you get very high quality recording built into the camera. That of course is recording up to 50 or 60p in 4K resolution. And as I mentioned, on the IP side of things, you have the same kind of connectivity uh, and, and IP capabilities we saw before. So 1080p streaming um, up to 20 megabits per second. That's low latency with that return video over IP, uh, with IFB audio over IP. And we would therefore consider it's very much, or absolutely is, the most powerful IP capability of any production camera in the market today. And putting that and achieving that within such a sort of relatively compact body, as you can see here, uh, I think is a great achievement by our excellent engineers. Um, uh, just to mention also uh, on the, the sort of back of the camera, we're now expanding the, the physical connectivity. So we now have, for example, an RJ45 type Ethernet, so as well as our uh, uh, USB, which we previously had. Um, and the uh, HC550 model also has uh, dual Wi-Fi MIMO antennas uh, to give you a very powerful and reliable local Wi-Fi uh, signal. Uh, so, as I mentioned, uh, there are sort of two models in the range, the 500 and the 550. Uh, and the 550, over all of those core features we mentioned, uh, adds in a number of, again, really unique features uh, which only JVC can offer. So, one thing which you may have seen from some of our pre previous models is broadcast graphics overlay. So, the ability to actually overlay a graphic within the camera, so maybe for a press conference, for example, something like this with a speaker name, um, that's all achievable within the camera itself, and that can go out to the live stream. It can go out via your SDI or HDMI output, or indeed be recorded to media. Um, some additional codecs, MPEG-2 and MXF, um, also support for the Zixi protocol, uh, which gives you uh, very resilient uh, streaming if you're in a challenging cellular environment. So Zixi is excellent for uh, supporting that kind of uh, environment. Uh, built-in GPS, and then as I mentioned, uh, on the 550, the uh, dual Wi-Fi antennas um, for uh, that local um, Wi-Fi support. So um, I think we, you know, we think uh, that the addition of the 500 and the 550 to the connected cam series of cameras, which started with the HC900, puts us in a very powerful position. Uh, uh, within that uh, camcorder market, and as I say, the IP capability we achieve, I think, is unrivaled in the market. So, that's it from the acquisition side. So, uh, of course, I mentioned earlier that we're trying to provide a complete end-to-end -end solution. So, at IBC this year, we're all also announcing a number of other IP connectivity solutions for studio use, for production use. Uh, to really bring all of those parts together and with the, of course the cameras as a, as a key part of that. Um, so one example of that is uh, the uh, uh, system we see here, uh, the SAP system uh, for short, which basically is a system which creates a local Wi-Fi network for which you can attach or uh, connect multiple cameras over Wi-Fi. So it could be two or three HC500s or 550s, for example, um, 
and then creates a bonded cellular link to the outside world. In combination with a heat bonding router, that means you can create a very, very cost-effective live IP production system. So if you're doing, for example, a sports event or uh, some small corporate event where you need multiple uh, camera channels, so this is a unique point where you could connect multiple cameras into the single Wi-Fi hotspot, then the uh, system we have here uh, uh, achieves that. So you have a very reliable bonded system with multiple camera supports, uh, connect any camera or certainly any GBC camera indeed uh, to that cell, to that Wi-Fi network and then uh, use the bonding. So as I mentioned for those kind of applications uh, it really is a unique solution at this particular price point. Um, and a couple of other uh, sort of IP system components to highlight uh, which we are having the booth here and we're introducing is uh, a, a new decoder, the BRD900, which supports uh, 264, 265, uh, decoding uh, up to 1080, 50 or 60p, with cross conversion, uh, with SDI and HDMI output. <coughs> so this is perhaps the final stage when you are doing your live transmission, uh, you've received your content back, and then of course you're decoding back to SDI. Then another interesting uh, system product we introduced also is the, uh, what we call the ZRAM product, which is using that Zixi technology that I mentioned earlier, uh, which is very efficient uh, over low bandwidth networks. Um, and this is a small standalone broadcaster uh, unit which gives you control over up to four streams under the Zixi protocol. So again, another part of the system where you can connect multiple cameras and have a very cost-effective uh, streaming solution. So as you can see, and of course, as you know, today we have only a very brief amount of time to try and explain uh, the, the systems, but you can see we've covered through connected cam, uh, some of the core field equipment. We have the support for uh, bonded solutions through um, uh, the bridge system we have here, and through uh, Zixi for broadcast IP control, and decoding it means we really can address all part of this, the, the, the production chain from acquisition through content delivery IP and then uh, decoding back to, to, back to video. Uh, so moving on quickly, um, uh, to just to very briefly touch upon uh, production monitors. Um, it is an area, as you will know, we've been uh, very successful with for many years uh, as, a, as JVC. And we are introducing and showing now a couple of uh, core uh, and new 4K models, uh, the DTU31 and the 31 Pro. Um, and this is respectively a UHD and a native 4K unit. Um, and these are uh, very much in the, the feeling and style of the production models as you may know from JVC, very reliable, high quality but affordable production solutions. So we think for uh, post-production, where there's a, a big market for 4K monitoring, uh, which is only really addressed by relatively high-end solutions at the moment. This gives a much more affordable uh, solution uh, with 10-bit uh, panel and 12-bit processing with 12G, quad 3G input, um, and many other features to support um, you know, normal production customers, whether it's in an OB environment or whether, as I say, it's for example, in a post-production studio. So, in summary, um, we uh, would like to think that at this IBC, we are offering a pretty unique, actually, end-to-end -end affordable IP solution. Uh, so whether you are live production customer in sports, news, uh, or other live event environments, um, leading, of course, with those key new connected cam models, the HC500 and the 550, uh, obviously adding to the HC900, which will be shipping uh, very shortly. Uh, the, uh, the SFE uh, IP bridge system, uh, also with the Streamstar range of live production monitors, which we have in the booth, um, and also combined uh, at the end with the latest generation 4K monitoring. So, as I mentioned, everything, of course, in the booth, if you haven't been there already, uh, very much wel welcome you to come, and I think that's all, and obviously welcome any questions. Could you just explain the bonded side again? Does that include 
the sims or uh, yes so there are sims that go into the unit yeah so you can have Vodafone or T-Mobile for example and that will go into the system and then it's obviously managing through the what's called the speed fusion technology it's managing the the bonding protocol right. yes sir so on the production monitors uh, I saw that it's got 100% of REC 709 and up to 83% of REC 2020. Yeah. How long is that color stability expected to be calibratable? Uh, I, I wouldn't know personally the answer to that question in terms of, you mean over time? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure over time, but one thing it does have uh, is built-in calibration via USB on the front. So. It's a very easy and convenient calib calibration method. So you just put the probe in front, connect via USB, and run the auto calibration. So it makes it very easy and quick to continuously calibrate your monitor, make sure it's as close as possible to where you need. What kind of auto calibration is it? Uh, Gustav, do you know the answer to that? Yeah, is the, uh, we use the, in the prompt, we use. Uh, Let's see, a simple version of what the sensor is the x right sensor. Yeah. So that's very cost effective, but are we also supporting SpecBoss, ET SpecBoss, very common uh, here in the European field, uh, as a high grade uh, sensor. Both can be operated from the, from the front side of the panel. So because the software, collaboration software is built in, into the monitor. So very easy even on the field, on the field use. And uh, typical calibration with the x ride sensor, typical calibration time is around about 10 minutes. And with a spec bus, because it's uh, getting more precise and it's more integration time, that's around about uh, 30 minutes to 45 minutes calibration, auto calibration time. But furthermore, of course, you have also to do choice uh, that you can use a 3D profile and you, with external software, you can create also your own 3D profile and can uh, load it into the display. Thank you. Okay, well, if no other questions, uh, then thank you very much for coming. And again, please visit with. Thank you very much.